Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare2 before here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Mitsubishi F1. The F1 is a Japanese swept wing, single seat, twin engine, supersonic strike aircraft that was in service with the Japan Air Self-Defense Force from 1978 to 2006. It is Japan's first domestically designed and built supersonic combat aircraft, jointly developed by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and Fuji Heavy Industries. It is essentially a T2 trainer airframe modified for a dedicated anti-ship and ground attack role. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty cool uh, looking jet here. Uh, basically a uh, first ever Japanese domestically made uh, military um, air or combat aircraft. Um, so that's kind of pretty cool to uh, basically build and have a nice tutorial on. As uh, Japan does use a lot of United States equipment, so it's cool to kind of see a aircraft that is solely built by the Japanese. Um, but it's a pretty cool looking uh, aircraft here. The rear of it really does remind me of that, of like the F-4 Phantom. So uh, once we kind of take a look at this model a little bit closer, you'll definitely see that. Um, but it should be a fun build, and especially um, if you're trying to build some uh, Japanese aircraft, this right here is definitely going to be a great addition. Um, so with that, um, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Bushbook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more, you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can pledge a small amount to the channel every month, and in doing so, earn a vehicle request to your choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel, and is very, really, greatly appreciated. So definitely feel free to check that out. Again, links are always in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look at the um, Mitsubishi F1 and um, everything we have for it. So this model here does have a landed and in-flight version. So you will have both of those available for you in this tutorial. Uh, go ahead and get started with, we have the nose of the aircraft here, the cockpit, all that uh, intakes on the sides, as well as the um, landing gear as you can see here. The loadout we currently have on it is 500 pound bombs, two on the wings, or two on each wing, and then one also on this hard point on the bottom of the uh, fuselage as well as some uh, basically air-to-air uh, -air missiles uh, located on the wings as well, or I should say the wing tips. Uh, as we work back further, we have the landing gear here for the, um, obviously the landed version. Uh, up on top here, just some various detail, the shaping there for the top of the aircraft. And as we get back further here, you'll see the tail. We have the twin engines here on both sides there, and obviously our kind of uh, horizontal stabilizer that swoop down a little bit. Again, really kind of gives me that F4 Phantom type vibe of a tail. Uh, but nice design overall. We have it in a nice green and tan color scheme, which seems to be the common color um, scheme that these aircraft were in. And just to give you guys a look at the in-flight model, this is what it looks like in flight without the uh, landing gear mounted onto it. So uh, overall, pretty f cool build and should be a fun one to add to your uh, Cold War sections as a nice Japanese uh, aircraft. Uh, anyways, though, let's go ahead and move in our to into our tutorial by beginning with our first layer. All right, guys. So moving into our first layer, we go ahead and beginning with layer number two. Now we start with layer two because it gives us a better baseline of the aircraft, and we're kind of able to expand upon this layer in both directions a lot easier. So that's why we're starting with layer number two here. Uh, a few quick things I do want to mention is if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to start these tutorials is first I like to go ahead and do this half on, half off. What this means, I'm going to do the center line completely on camera. And then after I have the center line complete, I am going to switch over to doing the um, right side. And then I will basically leave it up to you guys to copy the right side over to the left side. This aircraft is pretty much for the most part completely symmetrical. There are a few tiny little um, details that we have to change and I will talk about those in detail once we get to those points. And then that, anything I do on the right side will be done to the other side. Um, in addition, we will be building the aircraft in the in-flight configuration to begin with and adding the landing gear on at the end as a modification. So what this means here is that if you do want to build the landed version of this aircraft, you will need to make sure that you have three blocks of space between the ground level. So we have the ground level here, three blocks of space, and then we have layer two starting right here. Very important to make sure that is correct because if you are obviously a block off and we go back to add the landing gear at the end, it's going to be a little weird. Um, so just note that we will be adding the landing gear on at the end and just build it at that level if you are wanting to build the landing version. Obviously, if you're building it in flight, your level doesn't really matter as long as you aren't going to run into the block height limit. Also, uh, one last thing is the camouflage. The camouflage will be talked about at the end of the video. We will not be doing a super in-depth kind of tutorial to copy my camouflage in particular, but I will talk about how I went about doing it and uh, show you guys my technique to um, 
doing the camouflage and leave it up to you guys to go ahead and kind of either try to replicate yourself or to kind of just look at pictures online which is the best way to kind of go about doing it uh, but with that let's go ahead and uh, dive into this tutorial so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down a black concrete block at this point, if you are on Java, I would recommend placing down a block above this. Kind of goes up at an angle. We're going to place down a piston on the bottom of that block like so. We're going to leave that piston alone for right now. If you are on Java, or sorry, not Java, if you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I would place down another brick upside down stair in this place. Um, but we're just going to leave it at like that for right now. We're going to come back to that a little bit later and you'll see what we'll do. Again, Bedrock or uh, Pocket Edition, I would recommend placing down another brick upside down stair. We're going to place down another brick top slab here, a end rod, and two... Uh, or sorry, a chain coming off that end rod like so. Going back for the black concrete, we're going to place down a row of green terracotta. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven green terracotta blocks back in total. Followed by a row of diorite blocks. This row is going to be 12 back. We then will place down one, two, three, four, five, and six diorite walls back. A diorite top slab and then an iron trap door coming off that diorite top slab. With that done, going back up to the front, we're going to go ahead and place down a Wither Skeleton Skull coming off the side of that um, piston, or the Never Break Upside Down Stair, whichever you chose to place. We're going to go ahead and place down a black stained glass pane, then one, two, three, green stained glass panes, and at this point we do have a difference in our sides. Over here on the right side, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, and five mossy cobblestone walls. Over here on the left side, we're going to do something a little bit different. After those three green stained glass panes, we're going to place down a dark oak with upside down stair, a polished and set up sound stair with a dark oak wood sign on the side of it, two green terracotta blocks after that stair with two dark oak wood signs on the side there, and then a mossy cobblestone wall like that. So make sure you pay close attention to the sides, the, or the both sides there. The reason this is like this is because we do have the um, gun on the aircraft located in this section right there. So make sure you just pay attention to those differences and make sure that they are applied to both sides. So at this point, I would recommend building both sides of the nose here of the aircraft and making sure that basically both are taken care of like so. Anyways, at that point, we're going to go ahead and then continue on by going to both sides again and placing down two diorite walls back. We're going to go then place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Diorite full blocks back, two green terracotta blocks back, a polished andesite block, a stone brick top slab, and then an iron trap door coming off that stone brick top slab. Next row here is going to be a dark oak wood uh, top slab coming off this diorite wall here, followed by two more top slabs back of it from it, so you have a row of three. We then will place down two dark oak wood stairs, upside down, and then a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven uh, diorite full blocks, followed by a dark oak wood top slab, a dark oak wood sign on the side of the top slab, then a green terracotta block two green stained glass panes, and then a light gray stained glass pane, just like that. And after we have that done, we basically have the fuselage complete for that. We then want to go ahead and build back from these iron trap doors on the end here, one, two, and three. And we're going to use blocks that we can tell apart from the aircraft so that we can delete later. So yellow concrete stands out um, for me, so we'll just delete these later, but it doesn't really matter what block you use. We're going to have three blocks to go back, then one, two, three out to the side. So one, two, three back, and then one, two, three out to the side then an iron trap door, and then a second iron trap door behind it like so. We're going to go then delete these blocks like so, as we will not need them for the rest of the tutorial. We then want to go ahead and go to our uh, first direct block, or sorry, actually we'll go to our second one here. We're going to count out a total of uh, one and two blocks to the side. So we're going to go one, two out to the side, and we're going to place down a green terracotta block. We're going to delete these two yellow concrete blocks there on the inside here. We're going to place down a mossy cobblestone wall back from this green terracotta block, followed by a dark oak wood or trap door, or sorry, fence gate, and then now a dark oak wood trap door on the back like so. We'll grab some birch wood buttons, and we're going to go ahead and wrap birch wood buttons around this green terracotta block, and we'll go ahead and just wrap it around like so, except for the top. We're not going to do the top, but we can do the bottoms for right now, just so we don't have to worry about those later. And then we want to place down a zombie head here on the front there, like that. And that's going to be our first bomb. After that, we're going to go and then go to this this um, dark oak wood fence gate here. We're going to skip two blocks out to the side. So we're going to go and delete this first one. And we have this block right here. Same thing. Zombie head here on the front. Mossy cobblestone wall. Fence gate. And then a dark oak wood trap door. Closed like so. Again, birch wood buttons wrapped around this block. Except for the top there. Like so. And that right there will basically be your bombs. That will be mounted onto the wings. 
And uh, with that, that is going to basically do it for what we have here for layer number two for the build. Take a look at it from above. This is what we should have from top down view. Make sure to pay close attention to that difference there in the front with the gun being put on the left side and just those walls there on the right. Uh, with that though, that right there is going to do it for our uh, layer number two, and with that we'll drop down to layer number one. Moving into our next layer, we have layer one. For layer one to get started with, we're going to go to the bottom of the aircraft here. We're going to start off by going ahead and going to this iron or this green terracotta block right here. We're going to place down an iron trapdoor on the bottom of it, followed by a row of iron trapdoors. That's going to go back a total of ten blocks. We then want to go ahead and skip a space, and then we're going to place down a green terracotta block with a zombie head coming off it facing toward the front, a mossy cobblestone wall back, a dark oak wood fence gate, and then a uh, dark oak trap door like so on the end there and right there will be that bomb there on the bottom after that trap door or that dark oak trap door to place down three more iron trap doors back and that right there is going to be our center line like that going down the center to the sides we're going to start off by going ahead and going to this first die right full block we're going to place down one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten iron trap doors back and then going out to the side here, we're going to go ahead and go to our third direct block here. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, and six iron trap doors back. Uh, so just like that on the sides. Then on the inside here, we're also going to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood stair that will be on top of this direct block right here. Then a green terracotta block behind that stair. And then a dark oak wood slab like that to go ahead and make the little stabilizers there on the bottom. And once you have that all done right there, that is going to basically conclude what we had there for layer number one. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on up to our next layer. Actually, one quick thing also is on the bottom of this green terracotta block, we can place a birch wood button there. Uh, but anyways, other than that, though, that is going to conclude what we have there on the bottom. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we'll be going ahead and moving into layer number three. For layer three to get started with here, we're going to place down a black carpet on top of this narrow brick slab here. We then want to go ahead and place down a uh daylight detector turn to night mode on top of that piston right there or that narrow brick up sound stair depending on what version you're on after that we want to go ahead and place down a narrow brick slab followed by a um followed by another piston there or another brick stair depending on which game version you're on again and then at this point here we're going to go ahead and place down a black concrete block now we can go ahead and then after that black concrete block we're going to go ahead and skip a space or actually we're going to place down a green terracotta block and then right here at this point we can go ahead and place down a row for black concrete or we can go ahead and just leave a row for open if you want to do an interior there really isn't much room when it comes to this aircraft for interior so just keep that in mind um, when it comes to building this but we placed a black here just to kind of close off the can of the inside here and make it look like it's not a you know just weird void or looking into the inside in structure of the aircraft or really just the <laughs> emptiness um, so uh, just basically the black concrete there will do. Anyways, after that space of four, a row of four black concrete, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of green terracotta that's going to go pretty much all the way to our back here. And this row here is going to be a total of 20, and it's going to be on top of that last iron trap door there between the stone brick top slabs. After that row of 20, we're going to place down a direct block, a direct up sound stair, and a direct top slab like that to go ahead and finish that off. Going back up to the front, we're going to place down a zombie head on the side of this piston or that narrow brick stair. Then a green stained glass pane, two mossy cobblestone walls back, one, two, three, and four green terracotta blocks, a red concrete block, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen green terracotta blocks back. At this point here, you have a couple options of what you can do in the back here. Um, obviously, for those of you that want to uh, have the aircraft landed, most likely you're going to want the engine to be turned off, and if that's the case, uh, a technique that we can use here to go ahead and make that is we can go ahead and place down a black concrete block right here after that row of green uh, terracotta and then a stone button like that to close it off. Actually, I would personally kind of recommend screwing this back one more. So extending this row of green terracotta one more block. So you have a row of 16 and then placing a stone button like that on that black concrete. And um, also this inside here, these two green terracotta blocks will go ahead and replace a polished anisite. But what that does is it kind of creates, they look that the, of the engine kind of closes this off. And this is for if you want the aircraft kind of turned off. If you want the aircraft turned on, we can go in very simply. Um, instead of going 16 green terracotta blocks, we'll go 15, place a shroom light, and then uh, we'll place down an orange stained glass block like that. Since we're going to have this aircraft kind of the in-flight version, we're going to go ahead and place down that uh, design there on both sides, but as you can see, it looks like the engines are activated and they will emit some glow to them uh, if you have this aircraft out at night. So uh, that's what we're going to basically do for that. After that, though, we're going to go ahead and place down a iron trap door on top of this one. And basically, at this point here, if you're on Java, we can use the com command slash give at P 
Minecraft. Colon debug underscore stick. And this right here will be the command you'll be using. Press enter and it should give you this glowing stick. We can go and left click this uh, iron trap door until we get the option that says open false. We're going to go ahead and right click and it should say open true and it'll open like that. If you're on a different version of Minecraft that does not have access to a debug stick, what I would recommend in this case is to go ahead and use a birchwood trap door in its place and have this opened up to the side. Like so. Either one will work, uh, though the iron trap door fits what we're doing here for the build a little bit better. At this point, after that iron trap door there, or that birchwood trap door, we're going to place down the three iron trap doors back from it, just like so. We're going to place down there three iron trap doors out to the side from that, followed by two polished anti top slabs, and then a diorite top slab, and then a wither skeleton skull there on, or sorry, a zombie head on the end there. We're going to place down a polished anti top slab here, and then again two diorite top slabs back, and then we're going to place down a dark oak slab here and a polished anti slab right there. After we have that all done, uh, we then want to go ahead and go back up to the front here. And again, if you're on Java, we can go ahead and go to these pistons and using our debug stick here, we can very simply just right click our pistons and it will create a look like this for those pistons. And what it does is it gets rid of that top layer and it really helps with our sloping there for the front nose of the aircraft. So that right there is basically the sole reason we had those pistons placed there in the first place. Um, so just like that, just do, just take note though, if you do break a block or place a block next to these pistons, it will cause them to turn back to their normal state. So you'll just have to debug stick them again, and that's why we didn't touch them until now, because I didn't want to me have them messed up or anything like that as we built for the layers. Anyways though, uh, going ahead and moving back to the remaining portion of this layer. We're going to go ahead and place down a item frame on the side of this green terracotta block, and we're going to go ahead and place down a yellow bed in the item frame rotate on side. If you're on Java, we can go ahead and use the feature of placing down a dark liquid sign also on the side of that block to create a nice look here for the side. If you're on Java, or if you're on Bedrock and Pocket Edition, you will be able to place down an item frame and sign in the same block space, so I would just place down the item frame and disregard the sign. We're going to go ahead and place down our item frame here on the side of this uh, red concrete block. After that, a dark liquid trap door right here. We're going to go ahead and then place down a dark oak trap door here and have that open to the side, followed by a black concrete block, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 green terracotta blocks back, a polished andesite block, and then a stone brick wall after that. Continuing on, we're going to go ahead and place down a red stained glass pane coming off this trap door right there, and then going back from it, we're going to place down a row of two of green stained glass panes, and then a dark oak trap door. We're going to then place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 iron trap doors. Then a row of 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're going to grab diorite walls. We're going to place down a diorite wall on top of this green terracotta block. And then we're going to go back two more. And after that, we're going to then place down two iron trap doors after that. We then want to place down an iron trap door here. Turn off the side of this wall. Followed by a acacia wood trap door. And then one and two and three more iron trap doors back like that. After you have that done, we're going to then place down a row of diorite upside down stairs. So first off, we're going to place down a quartz top slab here. Come off this that trap door, and then two upside down stairs back, and a near quartz top slab there on the end. After we have that done, uh, we want to go ahead and place down a row of three, a uh, one, two, three, a birchwood trap or birchwood. Um, or actually, my bad, a little ahead of myself there, we are going to go ahead and then first off place down a row 3 of diorite slabs like that, and then our row 3 of birchwood fence gates like so, an upside down stair facing that direction, and an upside down stair on the back here which is going to face the same direction as the forward one. We're going to go, and go to the sides of the last stair here, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate to both sides there, and we then want to place down a birchwood sign on the side of the fence gates, just like that, followed by an iron frame there in the center. And we then want to place down a black concrete block in the item frame. And then again, if you're on Java, a birchwood sign on the side there like that. Then going to the front here, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate on the sides of the stair. Like that, to both sides. And then a skeleton skull coming off this um, stair like that. And with that all done right there, that is going to basically complete what we have there for layer number three. Uh, basically taking a look at it from above, this is what it should look like from the top down view. And with both sides uh, complete. Anyways though, that right there is going to conclude layer 3, with that let's move on to layer number 4. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 4, for layer 4 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a uh, daylight detector on top of this green terracotta block that's going to be turned to night mode, 
We're going to go ahead and place down a four, row four of black stained glass blocks back. After that, we're going to go and then place down a row of green terracotta, going all the way to the back here, row 23. That's going to end on top of that last diorite top slab. We're going to go and then place down a quartz full block and a quartz top slab like that to go and finish off the back there. Going back up to the front, we're going to place down a row of two of black stained glass paints. All on the side there are the first blocks, followed by two narrow brick walls after that. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mossy cobblestone walls back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten green terracotta blocks. A polished anside block. A stone brick wall. Then two polished dance, or sorry, two cobblestone walls back like so. To the sides here, we're going to place down, uh, or coming off these two mossy cobblestone walls, we're going to place down two of our polished anisite slabs, and then going back from those, we're going to place down two dark oak wood slabs. Uh, coming off the walls here, we're going to place down two green stained glass panes. We then want to place down an iron trap door here, on top of that polished anisite top slab, as well as two green, or sorry, three green carpets on top of those three diorite top slabs, and that right there is going to wrap up our tail. With uh, that all done, we want to go ahead and then continue on to our sides here. We're going to place down a dark oak wood trap door on top of this one here, to the side there. Fall by two daylight detectors back from that. Make sure to close that trap door if it does activate. We're going to then place down two dark oak wood slabs. If you're on Java, we'll place down one, two, three, four pistons. If you're on a different version of Minecraft, you have the option of using the end portal frames. So go and search it, end portal, and this right here. You can also go ahead and use these in this situation up on top here. Uh, those will also work, though I do like the look of the pistons better, so I'm going to go ahead and go with the pistons. But again, that option is there for you guys to use those end portals instead if you're on a different version other than Java. Replace down two dark oak slabs again, our three three pistons this time, then one, two, green stingless paints, and then a polished anisite, uh, or sorry, just a um, light gray stingless paint like so. Uh, also, I'm going to go ahead and grab, use this time to grab a skeleton skull. And I'm also going to place down a skeleton school on the side of this wall, right here, like that on both sides. With that done, we can go ahead and move to the side here. We're going to take our uh, zombie head. We're going to place down a zombie head on top of this dark oak wood trap door at a slight angle like that going back. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three, four, five uh, dark oak wood slabs back. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of two of dark oak wood trap doors. Next row here is going to be a row of three. One, two, three. Dark oak wood uh, slabs like that. Then two dark oak wood trap doors. And then a green carpet here on the end. Like so. We're going to go then place down one, two, three. Dark oak wood, or sorry, four dark oak wood trap doors. And then an air green carpet on the end there. We then want to place down a dark oak wood trap door on top of this iron trap door. And a cache wood trap door on top of that one. And then a uh, row of one, two, and three green carpets back from that. We're going to then place down a row of four, one, two, three, four green carpets, and then one, two green carpets like that. At this point here, we're going to go ahead and then place down a acacia wood button on top of this block right here. And this right here is going to be a feature if you're on Java, so if you're on Bedrock or po Pocket Edition, I would, put, I would just place down green carpet right here. But if you're on Java, uh, we're going to place down that acacia wood button. So I'll grab that again. Case with button, item frame, and then in that item frame, we'll just go ahead and place down a green stained glass pane like that for the top there. Um, so, yeah, just like that. And then for our missile here on the very end, we're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater on top of the stair, notches spread apart, and then a skeleton skull on top of that upside down stair, like so. And at this point, also, we can go ahead and take our debug stick here, and for those pistons for us on Java, we'll go ahead and just go ahead and right click those pistons to go ahead and turn them to that state there. Anyways, though, with that all complete, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number four. So here, take a look at it from up above. This is what it should look like, except for the carpet there on the side there, which got a, which did not get uh, fixed before uh, the start of that layer. But yeah, that's right here is what it should look like from up above for this layer complete. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number five. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our next layer, we're going ahead and moving into layer five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, and place down an airbrick slab on top of this second black stained glass block here, followed by two black stained glass blocks back from the airbrick slab. We're going to go ahead and then place down three green terracotta blocks, two pistons or two end portal frames, whichever one version you're on, go ahead and use that. Then a dark oak wood slab, a dark oak wood stair, and then a row of one, two, three, and four dark oak wood slabs back from the stair. Then one, two, three, four, five, and six um, daylight detectors, like that. A uh, green stained glass pane, one, two, three, four, five, and six green terracotta blocks back, like that. 
um, down the center. And also a dark oak wood trapdoor on the quartz top stab on there on the end. Going back up to the front, the sides are going to place down a green, or just a zombie head, sorry, on this uh, dark oak, or that black stained glass pane. Then a wither skeleton skull on the side of this second, or this first black stained glass block. And then a black stained glass pane on the second one. One, two, three. Green stained glass panes back. One, two, three. Or sorry, one, two. Zombie heads like so along those pistons or end portal frames. A zombie head here on top of the wall. And a zombie head here at a slight angle like that after the wall. We then want to go ahead and go back to the last two daylight detectors. We're going to place down two dark oak trap doors and make sure they lay flat like so. After that, we're going to place down two more daylight detectors back. And then we're going to take our zombie heads and place down one, two, three on top of those walls there. And then one at a slight angle like that on top of that uh, glass pane like that. Also on the left side here, we are going to go ahead and place down a difference. So this will be on the left side here, right in front of this dark oak trap door. We're going to place down a lever facing forward and then a zombie head on top of the block like that. And right there is going to be on the left side and the left side only for the fuselage. With uh, that all complete though, that is going to wrap up that. And with this all complete, we can go ahead and then go to our two pistons here and use our debug stick. We'll just go ahead and change them to that um, different state. With that though, that is going to conclude layer number five. And with that, let's move into our last final layers. Moving into our final layers here, we have layer six for ten. For these layers to go ahead and get started, we're going to place down a dark oak wood trapdoor on top of this black stained glass block here. And then one trapdoor on top of this green terracotta block right there, right behind it. And that right there is going to do it for the front. Moving to our tail, we're going to place down a green stained glass pane on top of this one right here, followed by a row of one, two, three, four, and five green terracotta blocks back, and a dark oak wood button on both sides of the second to last block, like so. Next row up is going to be a green stained glass pane here, then one, two, three, four green terracotta blocks back, and a narrow dark oak wood button on both sides of that second to last block, and also an end rod coming off this glass pane going forward. Like so, we can also place a dark oak wood sign on both sides of that glass pane, just like that. After that, going ahead and continuing on, we're going to go ahead and place down a narrow green stained glass pane on top of this block here. One, two, three, green terracotta blocks back, as well as a dark oak wood button on both sides here. We're going to go ahead and then place down a acacia wood button going forward on that first block there. And then dark oak wood signs here on the sides of the last block. And coming off the block here on the side, we're going to place down a zombie head that goes back like so. On top here, we're going to place down a green stained glass pane, two green terracotta blocks, a dark oak wood button to both sides of this first block, and then on the very top here, we're going to take our dark oak trap doors and place down one, two, and three across the uh, blocks and that glass pane, just like that. And once we have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for the tail. Looking at it around on uh, all sides there, that's what it should um, look like. And with that all complete, that right there is pretty much it for our base model for the in-flight version. With this, we're going to go ahead and move into the landing gear, showing you guys how to go ahead and add the landing gear onto the aircraft. And from there, we'll be going ahead and talking about the camouflage and all that stuff. You can go ahead and take this time to go ahead and look at the video chapters and skip ahead to wherever you need to. If you're just building the in-flight version and you just want the camo, go ahead and skip to that. If you're wanting to do landing gear, um, we're going to go ahead and jump right into that. So with that, though, let's go ahead and jump into building the landing gear. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our landing gear. For landing gear, we're here. We're going to start off our first... Um, basically our first wheel up here in the front. We're going to go and drop down to this section here where you would go to la this last mossy cobblestone wall. In this section here, we're going to go and break the iron trap door in that direct block right there on the inside. We're going to go then delete uh, this block right behind it and this one right behind it as well. So you have a space of three cut out into the aircraft. We can go ahead and then go from this point here. We're going to go ahead and place down a uh, direct block right above this. So we can go ahead and place a direct block here. And we can go and then replace these two green terracotta blocks here with direct blocks as well. We're going to place down a birchwood fence post, or like a fence post that comes down like so. And then this green terracotta block here will swap out for a direct block like that as well. So down from this fence post, we're going to place down a second fence post like so. And then after that, we want to go ahead and then place down a third fence post down and then a block of coal on the bottom there. We then want to go ahead and place down this banner design, which is going to be a white banner, a black border, and a black horizontal line for the center. I'm not going to go ahead and show you guys how to make it in the loom. It's only two steps and pretty self-explanatory. But this banner here will just be placed on both sides of this block of coal to go ahead and create a design that looks like that. We're also going to go ahead and delete this iron trap door right here on the front, and then we're going to place down a um, polished diorite stair like so. At this point here, we're going to then uh, we have a couple options we can do here. First is going to be going ahead and placing down a skeleton skull coming off this like so and then we're going to go basically up and kind of off this like so so you have these skeleton skulls going up 
And we'll just go ahead and place down their skeleton skull. That kind of goes up like that and connects up for our joint there for our leg. Now for on Java, obviously we have a little bit more uh, flexibility in what we can do here. We'll place down two blocks like so, and we'll go ahead and place down two levers. We'll use our debug stick, we're going to go ahead and left click the first lever here to where we get um, facing, selected facing. We right click it, and it will basically, after a few clicks, it might vary depending on what direction you have this aircraft built, but it'll basically look like it connects up with that fence post and face upwards. This uh, lever here, we don't really need to alter. Um, but for us, the best thing we can do here is to go ahead and uh, basically select it to be powered. So, powered false. And the best way to kind of do this actually is to place down a block up above here. We're going to go ahead and change the properties first of this by going ahead and check, select, go doing selected face, which currently is ceiling. We're going to right click this until it gets to wall. And then we'll go ahead and change the facing of it, like so. And then we'll go ahead and do selected powered false, and we'll go ahead and do that to true. And then we can delete this block right here, and this will kind of create this lever system that goes up and connects up like that. So, kind of looks a little bit nicer there, but again, the options are available there for you if you do not have access to a debug stick to go ahead and do that. Anyways, though, that is going to do it for the front landing gear, let's go ahead and move on to the rear ones. And going ahead and moving into our landing gear. For our landing gear here, we're going to be going ahead and moving into this section. We're going to go to this uh, third diary block on the side here. We're going to go and delete the block as well as the second block behind it and the two iron trap doors below that. Once we have those removed, we're going to go and then place down a quartz top slab right here. And we're going to drop down to a quartz slab going forward from it. At this point here, we then want to go ahead and drop down again from this quartz slab. We're going to place down our quartz top slab. Um, and then we're going to go then place down a quartz slab that goes forward from it, just like that. So, they'll look something like that. And actually, my bad, it's actually going to be a stair here. So, uh, this right here is actually going to be a stair. So, we have our quartz top slab, half slab, and then that stair there. On the back of the stair, we're going to place down a birchwood fence, po or fence post like so. We'll break the block down below here, place a lever that's flicked backwards. And then at this point here, we're going to place down two polished blackstone walls, and then two wither skeleton skulls on top of these walls. So, if we can get access to there, a little bit tricky, we're going to place down two, two walls like so. And then a skeleton skull come off this wall right here. Then after we have that done, we're just going to go and place down two uh, diorite stairs, kind of coming off that empty, that opening we have right up in there. And we'll place two iron trap doors in there just to kind of close that area off a little bit better. And right there, we'll do it for our rear landing gear. You're going to go and take that same design and copy it over to the air side. And once you do, you'll have your landing gear here complete for the aircraft model. Anyways, though, with that all complete, that is going to wrap up the landed and in-flight version of the aircraft. At this point, the last thing we have to cover in this tutorial is going to be the camouflage and talking about the way I went about adding it. And kind of showing you guys a few different angles so you guys can replicate it for yourselves or go ahead and kind of do your own camouflage but with that let's go ahead and move into talking about the camouflage for this aircraft so when it comes to doing the camouflage for this aircraft i'm not going to go ahead and build it obviously block by block as i strongly recommend if you're building a couple of these in one area that you kind of alter the camouflage up a little bit and kind of build it your own really the best way to replicate a camouflage i think is to go ahead and actually pull up some pictures of the f1 and to actually look at the camouflage and try to proportionally build that. What I mean is if we look at a picture, for example, it might have a basically a line of um, sand, or basically a very tan line that goes through this section. Most of these aircraft, if not all of them, are gonna be in a green and tan camouflage, like you can see we have here. So basically, you might have a little bit of a, a tan spot right here, but then you have green right here, and then you can kind of proportionally build it to where you have some sandstone in this area, uh, really, it's just kind of <laughs> up to you guys, really. And the easy way to build this is just to go ahead and take some stone, some sandstone. So sandstone slabs, stairs, whatever, smooth sandstone. I would recommend because uh, you don't get harsh lines or weird little details. Um, so I'd recommend obviously the smooth sandstone, uh, the sandstone walls, and then for your glass panes, yellow stained glass panes are really going to be your best option, unfortunately. And then on the wings here, you can use. Uh, carpet yellow carpet or um birch with trap doors the, the unfortunate part of trap doors or not trap doors sorry uh pressure plates the unfortunate thing with pressure plates is you get those little lines between the pressure plates so it's not very consistent where the yellow carpet does fill that space in entirely so it's kind of up to you guys what you want to do there but you can kind of see a few angles here um we made sure not to change any of the 
white color that's supposed to be for the underbelly that kind of whitish gray um, and in addition you can see that we have basically about a 50 50 blend here um, and it's not the it's not symmetrical on both sides so you'll see we have a little bit of tan that comes in here and wraps around our fuselage body and comes around to this side whereas this right wing we basically don't have we have a majority of it being green left wing here majority being tan so um, you can guys see that we're just trying to add camouflage to it it's not a very specific pattern um, though what it seems like with their camouflage is it kind of loops around in rings um, but we aren't trying to do anything too special with it um, anything too crazy and uh, here's just some different views of it if you are wanting to build one for yourself and or build the camouflage yourself I'm um, just kind of showing you guys what I did for it so hopefully these little angles help and hopefully kind of that explanation gets you on the right track for it uh, again I'm not going to do a block by block tutorial for it but you can copy this model here or obviously um, do your own thing for it um, yeah like I like I recommend anyways though that is going to do for this tutorial for both the land and in-flight versions for the Mitsubishi F1 ground attack aircraft hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put good use if you do abuse this build I do I see you guys give me proper credit for it speaking from a sign of the build to link to my channel or this video if this does appear on social media sites just be sure to get proper credit for the build that's all I ask for when doing these tutorials it helps my channel grow and continues to keep me inspired to keep on posting this type of content so as long as you guys give me credit for it, you're free to use it for a project you guys are working on with that though thank you guys again so much for watching as always don't forget to like comment and subscribe that's been geared to before and I'll see you guys next time